One of the most important decisions I made in my own business was to be authentic about what I believe. The challenge with this is when you lay out what you believe, there's a good chance you're going to offend some people. You might think this is a way to limit the amount of business you can do. My belief is it's just the opposite. Hi, I'm Josh Patrick. I'm the founder of The Sustainable Business. Today, we're going to talk about why putting out your beliefs and values is a good thing to do, even if it costs you some business along the way. You know, I know how hard it is to take a public stand about what you believe. We as a business owners never want to offend someone who might become a customer. At the same time, the cost we pay for walking on eggshells takes a toll on us. For me, that toll finally became too much and several years ago, I started being more forthright about what I believed and why. Hey, did it offend some customers? Sure, the answer is yes. It was painful to have those folks decide I wasn't right for them. And at the same time, I not only wanted to stop walking on eggshells, I want my customers to do the same. So here's an example of what I'm talking about. You know, several years ago during the last administration, there was a lot of stuff which I thought was really dangerous for us around immigration. I thought we needed more blue collar workers and I thought keeping all these people out of the country were keeping the blue collar workers out that we need to make our country go. And we need blue collar younger workers to support us old folks as we go through immigration. That means the country needs to continue to grow. When you stop immigration, we actually have zero or negative growth because we're not replacing everybody at a one-to-one -one basis. The other part about immigration, which I thought was really silly, is we're making it difficult for PhDs and master's degrees from people from outside the country to come inside the country. The more brain power we have in the country, the better off we are. So my stance, I made up very public and it offended some people. And for some, my stance was so controversial, they just didn't want to hear about it. So as a result, they decided to leave us. I also think it's important for you to put out your values. And again, some people will identify with them and others won't. So here's another example. One of my values is rights and respect. And it's a truly important value for me. This shows you how values can be used in your company. So we had a particular client and this client would call up our office really upset. I had recommended he join a peer-to-peer -peer group and they wanted to do some vetting. Well, he thought that was the worst thing in the world. So he called up the office, screaming at my assistant, using every four letter word in the book, and he wouldn't calm down. So when she told me about it, I called him and I said, what's up with this? This is ridiculous. And he said, your people want to vet me and blah, blah, blah. And he went on and on and on and on. Now, I was already ready to tell him to go away. And after his tirade at me, there was no question this guy was no longer going to be doing business with our, our company. And I can tell you that after I told this particular customer to go away, my firm took a big, giant breath. The folks in our firm knew I had their back, not only in words, but actions as well. And the loyalty that we gained from our staff was more than worth losing this particular client, who was a jerk anyhow, and frankly, I had had it with him. So I want you to consider being more authentic in how you are seen by the world. So here are some things you can do to start you on the journey. Number one, start by having a clear sense of what your values and core beliefs are. Without that, you don't know what you stand for, and it's really hard to communicate that, that to others. Now, you want to make sure you walk your talk on this. If somebody breaks that value and they break it in such a bad way, like my example was a little while ago, you got to tell them to go away, whether they're an employee, a customer, or a supplier. Number two, Make sure you walk your talk and live your values and your core belief. If you don't do that, you're going to be seen as a liar within your company. If something's a core value, it has to be true 99% of the time. If it's true 75 or 80% of the time, it could be an aspirational value, or it could be what's called a permission to play value. But either of those, you need to be clear, say this is a value, and it's either something that we're trying to make into a core value or not there yet, or every once in a while, we have to let it go for a variety of reasons. Just be honest about it. And number three, start walking your talk and publicly state what your values and beliefs are. 
Start slowly and build steam as you become more sure of what you're doing. And we spend tons of time on values and how to use them in your company. I would love to have a conversation with you about how you can start integrating values and beliefs into how you are seen by the world. So feel free contacting me at jpatrick at stage2planning.com to set up a time to talk. In the meantime, if you're not ready to talk, download our free infographic on Values Cheat Sheet. It's a simple five-step method to help you figure out what your values are and how to use them in your company. And while you're at it, why don't you scroll down and let me know what you think about more directly and about being more direct with your customers and what you believe in putting it out in the world. Hey, this is Josh Patrick. You're at The Sustainable Business. Thanks a lot for stopping by. I hope to see you back here really soon.